good morning welcome to yet another glorious day the day that the lord has made let us exceedingly be glad in it is a wonderful day and the day are the works of our mighty god the ever-present god in time of need the Holy One of Israel, the true God, the great ocean divider, the Ayan that I am, the God that was, the God that is, is, and the God that will still come, the God that is ancient, the God that is present, the God that is also the future. This morning, by the grace of God, I am here to share a daily exhortation with you. My name is Joshua Osatoame, and I'm here to share this morning exhortation with you. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for your great work. How you disappoint the enemy during the night. This morning we are strong, healed and head. Glory be to God. Even as we, your children, hear your word, bless our hearts, bless our soul. Make us to know wisdom. Make us to know your way. Lead us in the path that will bring about change in our life. Let us go closer to you and serve you. And give us victory on everything we partake on today. On every good work that we involve ourselves in today. Bless us, transform us, and make us just like you. In Jesus' perfect name, we pray. Amen. This morning, we're looking at a topic titled, God Owns the Future. God Owns the Future. Second Thessalonians 1, verse 2 and 7. Grace to you and peace from God, our Lord, our Father, Jesus Christ the seven to give you who are trouble rest God holds the future in recent years we have been witnessing an increasing of violence in the Western world it has been said that our era will be known as the age of violence. I don't know what it is going to be called, but I do know that the future belongs to God. To you who are troubled by the events you read or see on, on social media and newspapers, to you who are disturbed about the things you see on your television screen? The Apostle Paul say, rest with us. What he is saying is relax. There are three problems we have never been able to solve. The first is that of human iniquity. The city of Pittsburgh is the headquarter of over a hundred major corporations. The city has solved some great human problems through technology. It was in Pittsburgh that Dr. Jonas Sack developed the polio vaccine. Here is a city that could teach the world a few lessons. But there is one problem none of our great cities have solved. 
the problem of human iniquity lying hate lust greed when christ come back is going to solve that problem there is another problem that has not been solved the problem of human suffering modern civilized man is developing a high suicide rate he may live in the rest in the finest home in town and yet suffer from a broken heart loneliness boredom physical and mental suffering christ at his return will take away suffering he said he will wipe it with all tears. There will be no more backache or headache. Cancer and heart disease will be eliminated. Mental illness will be no more. All the disease of mankind will be cured when Christ comes back. The greatest unsolved problem of all is a crisis of death which each of us has to face. It is appointed unto man once to die, says the Bible. But when Christ returns for his church, those redeemed ones who are alive will not die, but will be caught up to meet him in the hell. For then, death will be ended. When Christ comes, peace will come. Our greatest statesman and scholar are seeking a way for peace. But they are attempting to do it without the prince of peace. Man cannot bring enduring peace. Enduring peace will be brought only when the prince of peace comes and set up his great and mighty kingdom let us pray our father and our god you are the only source of real peace in this world of stress and frustration iniquity will remain suffering will remain death will remain but with you in my heart i can find peace i can rest and sleep in calmness of the spirit I worship you, Lord, and I thank you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord bless us.